Right. Happy Easter, everyone. Sticking with Discover the Bible. Need a couple seconds for people to tune in, maybe. So what was your favorite Easter candy growing up? Okay, wait, I don't have anybody on yet. That's okay. We can stop. Okay. We'll wait to the start of the discussion. Yeah, until we get at least some people. Okay. Open the cups. There we got one. Oh, okay. We have a viewer, a couple of viewers. We <laughs> need to start a discussion question. I started too hard. early. I said, what is your favorite, what was your favorite Easter candy growing up? My favorite Easter candy? Like your favorite Easter food. Like, if I had to pick, I would say the Cadbury caramel filled eggs, even though I haven't had one in years and years and years. Hmm. But I liked those. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've always been a Reese's guy. Probably yeah. something Reese's. So regardless. Yeah. Maybe like jelly beans on Easter or something. Oh, I did jelly beans. Your mom I'm not, likes I'm jelly not beans a, huge, a lot. Yeah, I'm not a huge jelly bean fan, but. Yeah. The, Our uh, kids the ate a lot of candy Starburst today. jelly beans are pretty good. Yes, we're doing this. Linda, we're doing this, I don't know, till we get out of lockdown. <laughs> yeah, we might, even, we might even keep going. You know, if, if people are in, we're in. Uh, we are going to broaden broaden our, our people who are leading this. we got a bunch yeah. of people from our church lined up. So, Because um, you've been stuck with us three nights yeah, a week. You know, so. <laughs> a little diversity here. Just uh, different personalities, yeah. different perspectives. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep, it, keep it rolling. At least till we get through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, we're only on chapter four, so we'll make sure we finish <laughs> Mark with everybody who's interested. Uh, but tonight's question was, good evening, Tim. Good to have you. Happy Easter. I bet Miss Tim likes peeps. Peeps. Stale ones. Tim's a peeps guy. <laughs> stale <laughs> peeps. What's My brother, Ethan, he like buys whole packs and leaves them out so he can stale. It's disgusting. Yeah. We're, we're talking about our favorite Easter candy. Anybody have any favorite Easter candy? Maybe from when you were a child. <laughs> when you ate candy. <laughs> Let's see if we get more here. Yeah, we're not supposed Reese's to. Reese's eggs. There Reese's you go, eggs. Jane. Jane's with you. Yep. I like those Reese's eggs. Yeah. I was not a fan of Peeps. Oh, no. They're horrible. Or, or the, uh, those egg, those malt eggs. Yes. Who invented not, those? Not a fan of malt. Yeah. Uh, the malt chocolates. Agreed. Just, they're kind of uh, cho like chalky, you know? Just. They're gross. Yeah. They just like break up in your mouth and. <laughs> Right. Nasty. We should probably okay, we should it. get started. It's Easter. You probably all have, well, we are shelter in place, so that changes things a little bit, but uh, we're glad that you're here with us. And turn my Bible right side up. Uh, we're Mark chapter 4 tonight, and verses 21, or no, I'm sorry, 26, 26 through 34. So we're actually going to do two parables. They're really short, so we thought we'd just tackle two at once. Um, and if you're new with us, uh, what we got? Carl's, Carl yeah, likes malt and milk, milk eggs. eggs. <laughs> hey, to each his own. To each his own. <laughs> um, so if you're new with us, what we do here, we, we go through the text, we read it, we summarize it, we ask what it says about God, we ask what it says about people, uh, we ask if it's really God's word, which we believe it is, then how would we apply it to our lives? And finally, who could we share this with? So just sharing the good news. Um, so let me pray for us real quickly, and Stephanie can, can read for us. Lord Jesus, I thank you for tonight, and especially on this special day of Easter Resurrection Sunday, when we just remember that uh, you've conquered death, and that is good news and gives us hope and assurance. Uh, so we just praise you for that. We pray for this time together tonight, Lord, that you just be with us and lead us through this time. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, Mark four twenty six. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe at once, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. 
He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. All right, good deal. Parables. Parables can be tricky. They can you know? be, yeah. All right, so uh, first Jesus starts with this uh, parable of the seed that's growing. It says the kingdom of God is like a, a man who scatters seed, and then he goes to bed, and he sleeps, and he wakes, and all of a sudden the seed starts growing, and he doesn't even know how. And as soon as uh, the seed is completely ripe, then he harvests it, because it's time for harvest. The second parable was uh, talking about the kingdom of God as a mustard seed. So he says... Uh, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable should we use? It's like a mustard seed. It starts really small and then it grows really big and spreads all over the, the earth, really. And it becomes this big place where birds can land um, and there's lots of shade cast by this huge plant. And then it says that Jesus continued to teach them with all kinds of parables and some of them did not understand, but he continued to explain everything to his disciples. Well done. Thanks. Well done. Thanks. Okay. So what does this tell us about God? What does this teach us about God? I have a question at okay. the get go. Okay. Right. So when they're saying the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven, yeah? No, the kingdom of God, what are they talking about? Are they talking about just like what God has dominion over? Yeah, I think Or are they I mean, talking about like earth? No, I, I would say like God's kingdom, God's people, the people of God that he's okay. gathering together in the world, growing up his his kingdom. So it's that's the why, people like, the harvest, who are... When the harvest is ready, he comes. Like at the, so the in that parable, God is the sower who well, just wakes up every day and finally gathers. I think there's room for interpretation. I would say that's a, a popular one that God is scattering seed. Because I don't Jesus, remember this parable, to be Jesus, honest. And Jesus. I know I've read it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, you've read it many times, I'm sure. So many. <laughs> so many. <laughs> Stephanie knows her Bible really well. That's that's the truth. That's, I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> that's a compliment. But you know what? Both of these. So what struck me about God was the mustard one. Because I think all the time, whenever I hear, like, the mustard seed, I think, like, if you have the faith the size of the mustard seed. Right. Boom. But that's not what this is saying. I think what this is saying about God is that is the kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown in the ground is the smallest, but becomes this huge thing. Like that tiny little seed mm -hmm. from God, like his gospel is so powerful that it just, like it becomes, yeah, like that's a really powerful image. Yeah. That's a very cool image. In fact, I liked it better. I like it better than the other mustard seed. Image. The faith of the faith yeah. the size of a mustard seed. Yeah, they use mustard seeds a lot because you know at that time they really thought like the mustard seed was like the smallest seed there is, you know, in, yeah. in their mind. So it was a really good analogy. Yeah. Uh, so how about this one? Jesus comes into this world like a mustard seed and plants the gospel, and then it just starts taking off. Yeah. Just like wildfire. So Jesus is the mustard seed in the symbolism. Mm -hmm. He's a seed. Yeah. And he, God. He so what time. it uh, what it says about God is that He plants He plants that seed really into our hearts, right into the soil. But so how, how about some of you? What What do you all see here? Um, you know, these are parables. They're goofy. Um, I, I put the text there. You can read through it if you want. Maybe if you can see it. Yeah, there are some mysteries that we can't comprehend. There's some mysteries Verse 33. Holy Spirit is essential. Yeah, and, and you know, I was thinking, do you have any thoughts on that that you want to share? No. The Holy Spirit is Go essential. Um, you know, as I read through this or was listening to Stephanie, I think that's probably why Jesus was speaking in parables, right? Because, you know, he it says he did not speak to them without a parable. Um, and with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. And in other places, you know, he said he always used parables so that some of them couldn't hear it. And it requires a spiritual ear to to see the the spiritual truths in this. And there are a lot of people who didn't have that. So I think that's like he was yeah. he was drawing people with uh, soft hearts to himself spiritually. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the first parable, then the one that starts in verse twenty six, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground, mm -hmm. and the seed sprouts and grows, and he doesn't. I think if you're saying that a human is the guy who scattered the seeds and not God, like if you're taking that interpretation, 
like the man doesn't know how it's growing, but the earth continues to produce. Like God will produce through what we sow. Yeah. We just have to have faith in the seeds that we scatter. Right. Like we don't. Yeah. And then ultimately there will be a harvest. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul says that he planted the seed and Apollos watered the seed, but only God makes it grow. Yeah. And I, so I think there's like what you're getting at of like all we can do is plant them and we can water them. Yeah. But God makes them grow. And I, I think that's what we can see in this text like about God. God makes God makes the, the word grow in us and he develops that. Like we can't, we can't make someone put their faith in Jesus. Well, I can't make anybody believe in Jesus. Yeah. All, all you and I can we do is present. scatter seeds. You know, we just put out there the, the gospel message and we scatter them. That's such a freeing realization because Absolutely. it means you never have to argue about faith again. Yeah. I mean, it's like, important I mean to but to, you can discuss. Yeah, yeah. You can discuss. Like, I think we get so like, you have to believe what I believe. And it's like, here, let me present to you. And then it's your choice. Yeah. And just it shows the importance of prayer, probably of just trusting God yeah. to grow that seed up, because yeah, He's the only one that can really make them grow. Yeah, yeah. I also like how if like He like He has the uh, thank you, Thanks, Shelley. Shelley. <laughs> um, if He has like if He made the tree and like He says it puts out large branches so that birds of the air can make nests in its shade, and then it also says that like God is our shelter. That's good. Which you kind of alluded to in your sermon today. I yeah. know some people probably didn't watch it, but Psalm ninety one. You yeah. can look it up. God is your shelter. We we're talking about sheltering in place. Really God's our <laughs> shelter. Shelter in the most high. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and, and I like the idea of shade. You know, shade is a place of rest. The birds are there, like it's a place of safety, like they're setting up their home there. Um yeah. So anybody else, any observations from this? Any questions that you have or thoughts you have on, on these parables? Uh, we should probably move on to what As they talk about, about God people. or people. Yeah, we can do that. What it says about people. I think <laughs> probably the first one. After you. I really like verse 27, honestly. If I'm seeing the sower as a man instead of as God, which I think I would yeah, argue for that. Yeah. He sleeps and he rises night and day and the seed sprouts and, and he knows not how. Mm -hmm. Like what it says about people is that in general we are clueless. Yeah. And it just requires well, so much faith. This right here, there are some mysteries that we can't yeah. comprehend. Like that, I mean that, like how people come to faith has been argued since the beginning of time. You yeah. Know, like like is, is God initiating that or is that human responsibility, you know, free will or like is it our choice or does God? Does God really plant that seed? Um, and it, you know, I, I think He does. But or does He have someone scatter a seed into us? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think people scatter the seeds. But yeah. Romans one would say even even the you know the heavens declare basically like oh, all, yeah. all creation. You go into a mountain and you can't. Right. You're without the mountains excuse. telling you there's God. <laughs> like, you, you see these amazing things. You're like, yeah. there's got to be a, a yeah. creator behind this. Yeah. What do you see about people? Um, what do I see about people? Well, I want to include others too here. We got any? Oh. oh, there we go, Linda. Carl says you'll see the fruits of your seeds you've planted when you get to heaven. Yeah, that's that's I, good. I yes, that would be awesome. I really mm -hmm. hope that we have that like ability to realize because I know there's like so much. Like, you won't know. Like, I don't know that I was married to you or whatever, but I hope that I'm still like, hi. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> you look familiar. <laughs> um, yeah. Yep. That's cool. That's, I think that's, that's neat, you know, to think about. I've heard people pray for that, you know, just like imagining the people they could see. Uh, Dale says it shows with the advancement of uh, Christianity. Yeah. Like the growth of Christianity around the world. I think that's a, great thing the mustard seed i think is maybe what you're getting at there dale um that's good we need encouragement to keep being faithful yeah so maybe um it, it's hard because we have limited uh, dialogue here but uh, tim I, I think you're getting at uh, the thought of scattering seeds like being faithful with that continuing to scatter them and just trusting that god's using it somehow uh, it can be discouraging if we don't see that growth um I mean, maybe, maybe about people, 
this this closing part here with many such parables he jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it he did not speak to them without a parable but privately his own disciples he explained everything so that that idea of like as they were able to hear it um, you know i think there's some in there about people like like some people are just at a point in life they're not able to hear it and i think that's just an interesting spiritual reality that you know, like, like Jesus told the Pharisees, it doesn't matter what sign I give you, you're not going to believe in me. Yeah. Like there's a, there's a hard issue here. Like I, I could, I can heal people and you're still not going to believe me. And I think. Do you think it's also like a gentler way to present initial concepts? The parables? Than, than like the straight in your face, like you need to follow me or else you've chosen the wrong way. And it, kind of like to pique their interest or to make them start thinking on their own like to draw them in a little bit yeah um i mean i I think there is there's something there like this like we had mentioned before the spiritual element just like like uh i mean he says he spoke in parables so that some would not be would not hear in turn like the pharisees so i think it was kind of uh it was a way to exclude those who thought they had it all put together and didn't need him. Like they, they didn't have eyes to see or ears to hear. And weren't able through their own pride to hear the parables themselves. Right. Yeah, to yeah. hear the message underneath the parable. Yeah. And that's what I think this is here, as they were able. Yeah. So hmm. I think, you know, back to the people who like, like oh, we don't have responsibility or we can't make people believe, maybe just this recognition like, there's just some people that can't hear the good news. Like they're not going to receive it. So we don't need to like beat them over the head or, you know, Mm -hmm. continue in hot pursuit of them because Mm -hmm. like, they're just not in a spot. Like all we can do is pray that the seeds we scattered would grow because we can't do it. We can't make them. I I mean, I'm not going to share names or anything, but I remember having long conversations with some people and like, we kind of like agreed to disagree. And I remember thinking like, this person is never going to become a Christian and there's nothing that I can do about it. And that's mm-hmm. okay. You know, cause it's not on me. And like, then I ran into them, you know, like a decade on. Yeah. And they were like, well, here's the, and I remember just thinking like, wow. Like they came to trust Jesus. Because, well, yeah. Because I was so like, well, that's a lost cause. <laughs> and I think yeah. kind of that idea of the whole, like, like people might not be ready for the message, but mm. that doesn't mean that they didn't hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And then it grew and you're, you don't know how. Like the, yeah. Like the farmer, right? Yeah. <laughs> you went to bed and you woke up and it was growing and you don't know how. Oh, I like that. And it um, was spreading yeah. around. Jill says he was kind of talking to spiritual children also. So he started with stories. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. Good way to teach. Memorable. Yeah. And we have to remember it was, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like like they it wasn't written it was they were passing this on verbally to their children and mm-hmm. uh, they weren't walking around with their bibles so it had to be memorable content so your takeaway takeaway um application mm-hmm. well i think scatter seeds is an obvious one for me i guess where i'm at that doesn't i don't want to project on others there but um it's not my takeaway yeah just uh to scatter, <laughs> seeds, scatter seeds and to recognize that that we're not responsible for it and someone who like i speak most every week from the bible so that is like you had said that's freeing and i think it is really freeing like it's not it's not really uh on you or me it's just scatter seeds Mm -hmm. the word of god will not return void Mm -hmm. um my takeaway is definitely 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 it's good there's no question um Verse 31 and 32. I I just honestly had never, I the mustard seed concept is always like faith to me. Yeah. But I love this idea that it's such a tiny, tiny thing. Just grows massive. Just goes boom. Yeah. And that's where we find our shelter and that's where. Yeah. In this strange place of Jerusalem. Yeah. And, and all, all it takes is that little tiny seed. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I like that. Cool. Oh, we have any last comments we missed? Okay, we're getting down there on time, and it's Easter Sunday, so. The we'll... last question is, who Uh-oh. could you share it with? Oh, yeah, who could you share it with? That's not a question. <laughs> That's I thought part it was gonna of be the like, dialogue. Yeah, I thought it was going to be 
conversational. <laughs> well, that's conversational, but uh, we don't say names because for obvious reasons. But you know, yeah. if if you have someone you want to share it with, we just encourage you with that. Whether it's uh, or or maybe you know, it's just application towards someone of scattering the seed into their life. Um, I think that's fair too. But just some way to pass on what we've learned tonight. So, any last thoughts? The seed will grow, and we know not how. Drop the mic. Verse, verse 27. Drop the mic. mic. Drop. Mic drop. We're, we're out. All right. We should pray, and then we'll be done. But thanks for being here tonight, everybody. Happy um, Easter. Happy Easter. Enjoy it. Uh, a quick word on that. I know a lot of people are getting more and more stressed. God's grace is sufficient. Lean into him. Uh, stay patient. We're going to get through it. It's getting hard for people. Find a room in your house and shut the door if you need to. Yeah. I had to do that today. Just take a little, take a little <laughs> adult time out. Adult time outs are, are needed sometimes. Yep. Well, all right. Well, you want to pray for us or would you like me to close this close out? Some right. Father God, we thank you for the, the, the time together this evening. I thank you for parables and just, uh, you know, they're fun to look at and just to discuss and think about. And Lord, we pray that um, all that was pleasing to you would just remain in our minds tonight and every, anything that uh, was off track or was not honoring you or what you intended, Lord, that we just uh, let it fall through our minds. And I pray, God, you'd give people a desire to scatter seeds in this world with the days that you give to us. And uh, Lord, if there be anyone out there who's just wrestling with spiritual questions or, you know, trying to figure out who you are, I pray that uh, you just grow these seeds in their heart, God, that they would uh, want to know you more and that you would just do the miraculous work of uh, growing faith. And we just uh, are glad we get to participate in that uh, by scattering. And it's uh, fun to sit back and watch them grow. So uh, just pray you be with everybody who's here tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Happy Easter, everybody. Have a good night.